Dear participants, welcome to the course on supply chain digitization. It is jointly being taught by Professor Priyanka Burma, Professor Sushmita Narayana and Professor Devabrata Das from IIM Mumbai. So, today uh, we are going to talk about lecture 9 of module 3 of analytics in supply chain management. So, in the last uh, lecture that is lecture 8 of analytics in supply chain management module, if you remember like we develop this regression tree okay, and try to predict the demand of retailer located in various region based on their balance credit, location, age, size, promotion and holidays. We try to find out what would be the demand of these retailers and to find out that we develop this uh, regression tree. So, I will just quickly summarize what uh, this tree is all about and then how this tree is being built. Okay. So, let us understand. So, we have uh, various parameters related to the retailers, region, balance credit, location, age, size, promotion and holidays. So, I have to find out the demand of these retailers based on these attributes. So, if you look into this regression tree, so I have first size of the store. If size of the store is less than or equal to 30.5 thousand square feet and promotion was not given in that week, then if you look into node 3, the demand is 943, that is the estimated demand. Now, again, if there is another retailer the size is less than or equal to 30.5 thousand square feet and promotion was given. So, promotion was given to them, then you can see that estimated demand is 2360. So, let us say there is another retailer whose size is more than 30.5 thousand square feet and age of that retail store is less than or equal to 17.5 years then the average estimated demand is 2887. Then let us assume there is another retailer whose size is more than 30.5 thousand square feet, but age is more than 17.5 years, then the estimated demand is 8227. So, using this regress entry, given the retailer's various characteristics, we can estimate what would be the demand of these retailers. Now, in the last class, we explained like various managerial insights of this, how to interpret this tree in more detail, but in today's lecture, we will focus on how to get this tree. In the last lecture, we only focused on the interpretation of the tree. Now, in today's session, we will focus on how to get this tree using Python coding. So, now what I will do, I will first explain the code as well as output over here in the PPT and then towards the end we will move into Google Colab and show it to you like how this code can be run and the same results can be replicated. So, like classification tree uh, which we have seen in maintenance problem, uh, we similar kind of coding also will be written for regression tree. First, I need to import the data. So, for that we are calling the library pandas. Okay, so, basically this is data manipulation and analysis library. So, first I am importing panda as pd, then I am reading the data file. I have a data file demand dot csv. So, I am importing the data file into python. Now, after importing, if I just print few rows, it looks like this. So, I have let us say 310th retailer uh, whose region is south, balance credit amount is 12 lakh, location is urban, age 
24 years that means they have been operating since last 24 years. The size of the store is 36,000 square feet. Promotion was not given in that week and there is only one holiday. So, for this particular retailer the actual order quantity was 8640. Similarly, there is another retailer 311 who which is located in West. Balanced credit amount was 6 lakh, location urban, age 11 years, size 36,000 square feet, promotion was not given and holiday was 1, the order quantity was 3960. So, I have all the data, I am just reading out only 2 rows. So, all 1000 data has been incorporated into Python using uh, pandas library and reading read underscore csv command. So, now once we get the data into Python, we have to now find out and tell that out of these variables, which variables are my features variables, which variables are my independent variables and which variables are my dependent variables. So, in this case I will have only one dependent variable that is I need to find out that what would be my estimated demand. Okay. So, to do that first I am doing the least of variables, I am least then df was my data frame. If I go back, so df is my data frame. So, this file demand.csv has been incorporated into python and renamed as data frame df. Okay. So, now I am listing out all the columns of that data frame. So, what are the columns I have? Region, balance credit amount, location, age, size, promotion, holidays, order quantity. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, I have 8 variables, all the variables have been listed out over here. Now, out of these 8 variables, I need to mention what are the variables which are independent variables, what are the variables which are my feature variable. So, what we are doing? Now, we are defining feature variables x underscore feature equal to list df dot columns, it will give me list of all the variables. Now, out of this I am removing out of this x underscore features, I am removing the variable order quantity okay? because order quantity is my dependent variable which I would like to predict. Okay? So, order quantity is nothing but the demand in this case. So, now if you look into the output, I have all the variables which I have here, only thing order quantity is not here in this case. So, these are 7 variables which are my features variables. So, now region, balance credit amount, location, age, size, promotion and holidays, these are my x features variable that is these are my independent variable using these variables or using these characteristic I have to predict what would be the demand of a retailer. Now, here one interesting fact is if I look into the region as well as location they are not uh, continuous variable, they are categorical in nature. So, I have 4 region south, west, east and north. So, I cannot enter this data as it is in the model. Similarly, I have location rural, semi urban and urban. So, I have 3 category in location, 3 categories. I have 4 categories in region. Okay. So, now I cannot enter this data as it is into the model as a text. So, therefore, I have to convert this 
into binary variable. So, whatever model you are using it, whether you are developing a regression tree, classification tree, logistic regression, any machine learning model you build, you have to do this data processing first. If you have a categorical variable, you have to convert them into binary variable. So, let us see how are you converting. So, if I have 4 categories, then I need 3 binary variable or 3 dummy variable. If I have 3 categories, I need 2. So, in general, if I have m categories, if I have m categories, I need m minus 1 dummy variables. I need m minus 1 dummy variables. So, in the case of region, I have 4 categories. So, I will form 3 dummy variables. Let us see. Uh, I have used this code encoded underscore df equal to pd my data frame then get dummies. Okay, this is a function in python. If I use this function, I will be able to create dummy variables. So, I will show you the output of this. So, region I had 4 categories. Since I have 4 categories, I will need 3 dummy variables. So, I have created 1 dummy variable region underscore north, 1 dummy variable region underscore south, another dummy variable region underscore west. So, this dummy variable will have 2 value either 1 or 0. Okay. So, how do I explain this? So, let us see uh, for the observation 978 the region underscore north is 0 that means the region is not north for this particular retail region underscore west is also 0 region underscore south is 1 that means this particular retailer 978 it is from south region. Okay. Similarly, if I see 979 it is from west region it is from west region. Can you tell me what is 980? 980th retailer is again from west region. Now, what about 981 retailer? So, this is not from north, not from north, not from south, not from west. So, it is then from where? So, it is from east because there is no binary variable for east. So, east is my test category. So, therefore, 981. So, this is from east. Okay. So, it is not from north, not from south, not from west. So, it is from east. 982 again not from north, not from south, not from west. So, it is east. So, using these 3 binary variable, using this 3 binary variable, I can code like all categorical variables. Similarly, 983 it is from north, it is from north, okay. 980 is again west. Done. Now, that is how you can interpret the dummy variable. So, I had 4 categories in region, I converted them into 3 dummy variable. Now, can you tell me what would happen about location? Location I have 3 categories rural, semi urban, urban, I will need to form 2 dummy variable and that is what we have done location underscore semi urban location underscore urban. Okay. So, urban and semi urban like two dummy variables we have created the rural is my base category. So, if I look into 978 the value is 0 that means, it is not semi urban it is not urban. So, what does it mean? It is rural. So, south and rural the first one 979 observation it is semi urban is not it because semi urban value is 1 980 again semi urban 981 urban 
982 not semi urban not urban that means it is rural okay it's rural 983 semi urban so it's clear so that is how we can convert dummy variable like convert categorical variable into dummy variable so main idea is if there are m categories I have to create m minus 1 dummy variables and while creating this one category has to be base category like in the case of region we have kept east as my base category because north south and west I have created three dummy variable so east is my base category okay so east is base category Similarly, here I had three categories rural, semi urban, urban. Rural is my base category. So, I have created uh, 3 minus 1, 2 dummy variable. Okay, so, now this treatment I have to do before I actually go for a model building. So, whatever could be your model it could be logistic regression, multiple linear regression, any like disease entry, random forest, you have to do this data processing first, so that model can understand uh, the categorical variable properly. So, now we have done the data processing, categorical variables have been converted into binary variables. Now, we have the data with us and you see <laughs> number of variables has actually increased. Earlier I had 7 features variable. Now, if you see uh, instead of only region, I have 3 variable. Instead of only location, I have 2 variable. So, region variable has been converted into 3 variables, location variable has been converted into 2 more variable. So, therefore, I have total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, independent variables I have, okay. And dependent variable is order quantity, which is there, okay. Now, once we get dependent variable, independent variable, data processing is done we have to split the data in two parts, training data as well as test data. So, what is the requirement for that? Because I cannot take the whole data set and train the model on it. If I do that, then I will not have any data set to test the performance of the model. So, therefore, we keep aside some portion of the data to test the model which is not part of the training. So, in our case, uh, we are using 30 percent of the data as test data, the rest 70 percent data will be my training data. Okay. So, we are using this python code from sklearn library, we are using model underscore selection, then import train test split. So, automatically uh, this function is there. So, if I call this function and put test size equal to 30 percent, I will get 30 percent test data. 70 percent training data. You can change this number 40, 60 like whatever you wish for. Now, once we get this uh, training data, I have 700 such observation, 700 observations are there. Okay. And then I have 300 observations which are my test data. Okay. So, this test data I will keep it aside to test the performance of the model. Now, once we get the training data, I need to build the model on that training data. Okay. So, in this case, since we are using a regression tree, so what we are doing from sklearn, from sklearn, I am importing decision tree regressor. Okay. So, sklearn is a machine learning library for python, it features various algorithm like k means disease entry, random forest, logistic regression. So, in our case, we are calling disease entry that to disease entry regressor. 
and in the decision tree regressor I have to mention what is the maximum depth of the tree like how much depth we would like to go. So, we are mentioning 2 now and then I am fitting the regression on training data. Okay. So, now once we fit the regression tree then I need to print the tree to see how this tree has come. So, for printing it we need to import a library called matplot library. So, matplot basically a plotting library for the python programming language and then again from sklearn I am importing tree. So, I am importing two library matplot from matplot I am importing pyplot from sklearn I am importing tree. Now, using these two I can actually print the uh, regression tree this is how the output would uh, look like. Okay. So, now <coughs> how to read this tree because you have seen this output uh, which we have explained in the last class this output is exactly same as the output which you got using python. I have represented it like this so that it becomes easier for you to understand, but the tree which you got using python is exactly same. So, let us explain how it is same. So, first thing is the node 0 in which I have all the 700 observations you see all 100 percent data is there 700 means 700 training data like total data I had 1000 I had kept aside 300 for testing. So, I am taking 700 observations I have all the 700 data and the average demand is 2 to 7 0 which is my predicted value. Now, from here I am using the variable called size of the store to split this node in two part size of the store less than or equal to 30.5 thousand square feet size of the store more than 30.5 thousand square feet. So, if you see here in the python output exactly same size less than or equal to 30.5 thousand square feet sample 700 and the predicted value is 2270. So, 2 to 7 0. So, at node 0 it is matching and then node 0 is splitted into two part size less than equal to 30.5. So, if I go in this direction this statement is true if I go in this direction this statement is false that means this is size less than equal to 30.5 this is actually size greater than 30.5000 square feet. Okay. Now, if size is less than or equal to 30.5000 square feet, then I am seeing here demand is 1902 and how many observations I have 612. So, now you see size less than or equal to 30.5 demand is 1902 number of observations 612 size is more than 30.5 how many observations I have 88 demand is 4829 demand is 4829. Okay. This is exactly matching. Now, here after coming to this node I have to check promotion promotion less than equal to 0 0.5, but promotion is a binary variable the value is either 0 or 1 less than equal to 0 0.5 means promotion equal to 0. And this direction means promotion greater than 0 0.5 that means promotion equal to 1. Okay. Now, size less than equal to 30.5 promotion 0 for that particular retail store the estimated demand is 943 you see is matching 943. Similarly, for the retail store whose size less than or equal to 30.5 and promotion was given the estimated demand is 2360. It is 2360. Okay. Now, same way I have to go to this direction also size greater than 30.5 edge less than or equal to 17.5 this is as less than or equal to 17.5 this direction is edge greater than 
17.5 ok. Now, for a retailer whose size is more than 30.5 and age is less than equal to 17.5, the predicted demand is 2887.3 that is 2887. So, you can see 2887. Similarly, for a retailer whose size is more than 30.5, age is more than 17.5 years, the estimated demand is 8226.87. So, if we round it off, it will be 8227 and that is what it is coming. So, the tree which we got using python coding is exactly same as the tree which we have shown to you in the last class and the tree also gives you the MAC values. Okay. So, if you look into this tree, see MAC value is given 815-1813 which is matching with exactly this. Similarly, so any node you go, you will see the MAC values also. Okay. So, the tree which we got using python coding is exactly same the one which we are showing it over here. Okay. Now, what we will do? Uh, we will go to this Google Colab website and show it to you like how this output is generated. Okay. So, let us go back over here. So, what we have done exactly like the code already been explained to you. So, we have imported the data, we are importing the data demand dot csv. Then once we import the data, we are listing the columns, then we are defining the feature variables. So, I have all the columns you can see. So, out of these columns order underscore quantity I have to keep it aside for dependent variable. So, that is what we are keeping it aside we are removing this then we are getting region balance credit amount location age size promotion holidays as x feature. So, these uh, these will be my independent variables and dependent variable is order underscore quantity. Then we have done the uh, dummy variable part, we have converted categorical variable into dummy variables and this is the output we can see. Uh, region has been converted into 3 dummy variable, location has been converted into 2 dummy variables and then we are defining feature variables and dependent variable like x is my feature variable like after encoding. So, we have to first encode the categorical variable that means convert categorical variable into binary variable then whatever x we will get. So, this, this all x these are all my independent variable we are putting it over here and the dependent variable is order underscore quantity. Then we are splitting into training and uh, validation set. So, x train I have 700 observation you can see y train uh, x test I have 300 observation. Similarly, I will have y test and y train, y test will have 700 rows, y test, y train will have 700 rows, y test will have 300 rows. So, now this test data will be kept aside for validation. We are using now training data, you can see x train and y train and then I am importing this is entry regression. Then once you run this, I am using maximum depth equal to 2. So, I will go up to 2 level. Then we can print the tree and this is how the printed output will look like. Okay. So, if you see it is matching exactly same like what we showed in the uh, PPT. So, you can also reproduce the same like output we will be sharing you the data as well as uh, python code. You can use Google Colab, Jupyter notebook or any other python notebook and run this. So, in the next lecture, I will show it to you like how the validation happens, okay. like how do I test the performance of this model. So, we have developed this model, but how good this model is, okay. how good this model behaves with the test data. We have done it for the training data, but we have to actually see on the test data how it is perform how it is performing. So, in the next lecture, we will uh, show it to you 
how the performance happened, if the performance is not so good, what measures should you take and so on. So, thank you. See you in the next class.